Hey everyone, today we will learn how we can create data on Superbase. This is a Superbase database video series for next year's 15. So first you need to go to the project dashboard and then just go to table editor. I have mentioned before that Superbase uses Postgres behind the scene which is a SQL database or relational database. In relational database you store the data in tables, in rows and columns. And as you can see we don't have any table yet and we are in the public schema and we have a bunch of other schema as well for example auth schema and auth schema contains all the user related tables and it is protected and managed by superbase so you don't need to do anything here we're gonna only focus on the public schema but what is a schema a schema in Postgres basically group of tables. It doesn't only have to be tables, it can be views, index, and a database can contain multiple schema as you can see on the drop down. So let's create a new table. I'm going to uncheck row label policy, confirm, because if you enable RLS, then it will lock the entire table. You will not be able to read or write any kind of data. You need to write policy to do that. And I'm going to be covering RLS on the last video of the series. So it is fine to disable it. And you can also enable real-time database, but I'm not interested. And by default, you will have two columns, an ID and a created ad field. And the ID is checked as the primary key. A primary key is basically the unique identifier for the row. And it doesn't have to be name ID. You can name it anything like post ID, but ID is just fine. And then you have to provide the data type. For ID, you can use int like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or you can also use something called UUID. It's just random unique IDs. And then you can provide default value. We are using this built-in function called get random UUID. So whenever you will create a new row, Superbase will automatically generate a new ID for you. And obviously we have set it as a primary key. Then you have created at field, which is storing the timestamp. And here the column name is actually in snake case. In Postgres, you name the column names in snake case. But in JavaScript, we use camel case, so there will be conflict. So for simplicity, I'm going to rename it in camel case. And let's add more columns. Let's add a title. And the data type will be text. I don't want any default value. If you click on this gear icon, you will have three options. First, nullable. If you make your column nullable, then it can contain null if you don't provide any kind of value. It can make the column optional, but for title, I don't want that to be optional. I want a uh, text, so I'm going to uncheck this. You can also make a column unique. This can be useful for storing user emails, and then you can also define a column as an array. So I'm going to uncheck all of them, and I don't want to provide any default value. Let's add another column, content, and the data type will be text again. And I don't want it to be nullable. And add another column is public. It's going to be a boolean. So with this, we're going to check if the post is public or private. And by default, it will be false and it cannot be nullable. And let's add another column, total likes. And the default value would be zero, not nullable. And finally, total columns. And the default value would be zero. I don't want it nullable. So that's it. We don't need to add any foreign keys. And one more thing, if you are new to SQL, 
that you just cannot randomly add a new column for a specific row you need to add the column for the entire table for all the rows if you already have some rows in the table and the column is not nullable and also you don't provide any default value then you'll face an error the rows will have empty columns and you cannot have that so either provide a default value or make the column nullable so that's it for the table let's save and now we have an empty table you can import data by csv let's add a new row let's insert title will be post one content one is public let's make it true total likes maybe 10 and total comments maybe five and i've just noticed that i made a mistake i named the column total columns it should be total comments and by the way i'm not going to be implementing any likes and comment feature these are going to be just some dummy values it will be useful for learning filters and sorting so let's save and i will rename the column so click on these three dots and edit table and I will rename it to total comments. So we have added one row to our table and we have used the UI, but almost everything that you can do in UI, you can also do that in SQL. So you have the SQL editor. So now let's see how we can create data directly from our Next.js app. So I will create a server action first. A server action is basically a function that will be running on the server inside of the browser. So actions post.js and you need to add a use server directive to make all the functions inside the file a server action. And let's create a function create post. This function will be used inside a use action state hook. That's why it will have two parameters. First one is the previous state. I will talk about that in a minute. And then the form data containing the input values. And in case if you don't know, use action state is a React hook that allows you to manage state while using a form action. And if you want to learn more about it, uh, I have an entire video about this on my YouTube channel. I'll put the link on the description. So now you need to first create a super base client. So we need to use the create client for server function. This one. So const super base await create client for server. And we need to use this client to interact with super base. First get the form data. You get the input values using this get method and you need to pass the correct input name and you need to make sure that the name attribute is set properly in the input tags. So these are for the text input and this one is for the checkbox input. If the checkbox is checked then the value will be a string on otherwise it will be null. And let's create a payload object. And now we can use the insert method to add a new row from the post table. So superbase dot from and pass the table name posts. And then insert and pass the object that you want to add. By default, it will just add the row. It will not return you the new row that is created. If you want it back, you can use the select method. And it will give you an array, but if you want it as an object, then you can use single method. And let's get the data. And error. Let's console log data and error. And if there's an error, we're going to return a response. We're going to send the error message and we also need to return the form fields. I will tell you why in a minute. 
and now finally just export the function now we can add our ui so let's create a page create slash page.jsx and let's create a component and now let's just create an initial state so the initial state will basically hold the default value of the form fields and the error value which is just an empty string for now which is just an empty string and then we need to use the use action state hook so it takes two things first the server action and another one is that initial state so create post and then the initial state and it will return you an array so let's restructure them first it will give you the state and then the form action and then a pending state the state will be whatever you will return from the action and this form action is basically the function that you will pass to the hook and this is just a pending state now let's restructure the state and add the form UI I will paste the code so this is the form code we have this basic text input for the title then this text area for the content and the chat box and we have a button for creating the post we are going to disable the button if the pinning state is true also we will show our loader and finally we will uh, display an error if there is any and I will run the dev server and let's go to localhost 3000 if you click on new post it will take you to the slash create page and we have an error let's fix that we need to make sure that it's a client component because we are using a hook so this is the UI I will add a class name to the h1 now if I click on this button it will not do anything we need to add the action attribute to the form and pass the form action and now let's see if everything works or not so I will add a title post1 content one let's create a post and we have an error that the error is undefined which makes sense because the post was created successfully and we have a response this is the row that was created and the error is null and if I go back to the table Now we have a new row post one content one there is one problem using a server action but before that let's fix this i want to redirect the user after the post is created to the post page so i can use a redirect function and it should be from next slash navigation instead of next slash dist slash server slash api utils and let's just redirect the user to post slash data dot id and then we won't have any error let's add another and now we are on a different page and the page doesn't exist that's why we had this photo for error but that's completely fine but one thing you might have noticed that whenever you submit the form the text input got reset and you might not want that it used to work before but now it doesn't hopefully they will fix it but there's an easy fix for this that's why we are returning the form fields remember i mentioned that the state the state variable will be whatever you will return from the server action so if you return the form fields the input values as a state then we will have access to those input values even after the input is reset 
So we can add a default value to the inputs. So let's restructure the form fields. Let's get title, content, and is public. And add a default value attribute. And then here. And for the checkbox, it will be default checked. To demonstrate, I'm just going to comment this redirect function call and return an object with form fields and error to an empty string. Now, let's add a post. Uncheck this and let's create post. And after the form submission, we still have our input values. And if I go to the table, Refresh, we have this post too. And if you want to add multiple rows in a single request, you can just pass an array instead of a single object. I will duplicate this. I will also comment this single method. And now let's add a post. Duplicate, post, and let's create. And on the terminal, you see that we have three objects in an array. And you see this duplicate post. So this is how you can add data in Superbase from Next.js. In the next video, we will learn how we can read data from Superbase. So that's it for today. Stay safe. Goodbye.